this, this little thing has worked out great for us. We can run our fridge even when it's raining. Now there's a little bit of a start current on that motor. So we'll pick, uh, we leave the fridge unplugged. So in the morning I'll look, okay, where are we using the most electricity? I'll plug it in on a high voltage system or a low voltage system. If I plug it into the high voltage system, I'll look, run it through this little switching power supply. Um, and then if it gets starts raining after that, it's fine. The fridge will keep running. Uh, our, uh, our bigger solar rack, that six panel rack is 1400 watts. The fridge only needs about 40 watts. So even in pretty heavy clouds, the fridge will keep running. Uh, our main loads on our high voltage system in the wintertime, we run our heating blowers, which I'll talk about in a minute. In the summertime, we run the well more because we do some irrigation and whatnot. Uh, so we can switch. Uh, the DC microgrid that we have is very multilinear. We have a bunch of power supplies connected to a bunch of demands. It's radically more resilient than a normal uh, off-grid design. Uh, our systems basically never shut down. The lights never go out unless we turn them off uh, and normal off-grid systems fail. In fact, just a few weeks ago, we had a big windstorm and our neighbors lost power for a few days and we were happy. We had no loss of power. And if these DC, DC systems do start to fail, they tend to weaken. So uh, our, our lights might start to dim if we overstretch the batteries. Our water supply, water supply the pressure might start to drop. Uh, everything kind of gives us a warning. So that's another advantage, a big advantage of these DC systems is they're not start-stop system. It's a, it's a multi-linear system that can basically never fail because it's a bunch of different systems and you can have some issues in a particular system, but the whole system is not going to fail. Um, so basically what happens with a DC microgrid is you figure out ways to swap out DC motors for AC motors. Uh, the easiest way to do that is to find belt driven equipment. Uh, a lot of like if you go to whatever department store these days and you buy a blender, that's not going to be belt driven. It's, uh, these days they often either have the motor like with blenders, uh, the motor shaft that goes up to run the blender is actually the same shaft that's the, the central shaft in the motor. There's no coupling whatsoever. Um, uh, a lot of like shop equipment these days, like compressors, uh, or pumps, the the compressor or the pump itself is bolted directly onto the head of the motor. So there's no uh, there's no belt there at all. It's just the same shaft runs out and runs the compressor or the motor. You can theoretically convert that kind of equipment to uh, a DC system, but it's much, much easier to find older equipment. Uh, a lot of older equipment is belt driven. Uh, this thing you're looking at, you can see it's kind of dusty. I just snapped a picture out in our shop. This is a little bench grinder that I use quite a bit. We've got two bench grinders, a big one and a small one. Uh, this one's a belt drive. The belt actually comes right off the end there. With the belt, you just stick the motor in and you're good. You don't have to worry about uh, uh, the, the, the coupling between your device and, what, and, and, the, and the motor itself is much simpler, much easier. Again, the uh, DC voltages are 12, 24, 48, 90, 180. You need to plan around those voltages. So our high voltage system is 180. You could just as easily plan around 90. Uh, we also run, we run our lighting system and our charge uh, system for our, um, uh, for our house. We charge the cell phones, laptops, all the electronic toys, DVD player, whatever people want to bring uh, at a nominal 12 volts. And then we run some irrigation pumps at 24 volts. Uh, you could just as easily run things at these other voltages, uh, but you just have to think about, okay, how am I, how, you know, how are you going to set it up? How are you going to plan for it? Uh, so we can tolerate huge voltage swings. But if you're going to set up like a 90 volt system, you could use three panels instead of six. That's fine, but you would want to buy 90 volt motors and not go out and buy 180 volt motors. You want to aim for your target voltage, even though these motors tolerate huge voltage swings. Uh, 